to introduce himself. What do you want to do? I want to do a song. I'll do a song for Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank God for the praise and worship just went forth. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. We just thank Pastor John and that Lady Jones for this opportunity to let the man of God come forth tonight. He's a real man of God. He's my husband. And we just thank God for this opportunity to get a chance to minister to the youth. Because nowadays the youth are truly falling. The enemy is taking them out every day. But we just thank and praise God for the people that came out today. The people that had a mind to want to go higher. The people that got a mind to want to be delivered tonight. So we just thank and praise God for that. And I'm not going to hold you up anymore. So I'm introducing y'all. None and other, my husband, Brother Terry Clark. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Get, come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Yes, thank um, Thank the Lord. Thank God. And I thank God for Pastor Jones and God for Sister Jones. And I thank God for our um, Mount of Ministry family. Amen. Amen. And um, God, I just thank God for just being able to come out tonight and being able to speak to the youth. Because the enemy have been coming in like a flood and a lot of youth have been falling. Falling weak. Amen. Jesus. Amen. I want to share this with you. It's the statistics for, for AIDS in the U.S. And it reads, say, CDC estimates 1.2 million people in the United States are living with HIV infection. One in five, 20% of those people are unaware of their infection. Despite increases in the total number of people in the U.S. living with HIV in recent years, due to better testing and treatment options, the annual number of new HIV infections are remaining remain stable. However, new infections continue at far too high of a level, with approximately 50,000 Americans becoming infected with HIV each year. In 2010, it estimated 47,129 people were diagnosed with HIV infection. In the 46 states with confidential name-based HIV infection reported since at least January of 2007. In that same year, it estimated 33,015 people throughout the U.S. were diagnosed with AIDS. Since the epidemic began, it estimated 1,129,127 people in the U.S. have been diagnosed with AIDS. An estimated 7,774 7, people with AIDS died in 2009. And nearly 619,400 people with AIDS in the U.S. have died since the epidemic began. Amen. I just wanted to share that with y'all. Got your Bibles. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray before I read, even get into the Word of God. Lord God, I ask you to bless this Word tonight, Father. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you let this Word come forth, Lord God. Lord God, and pray someone's heart, Lord God. Lord God, so they may ask, Lord God, what must I do to be saved, Lord God? Lord, I pray that this Word tonight, Lord God, will edify the church, Lord God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you will move me out the way tonight, Lord God. Lord God, move flesh, Lord God, in the carnality, Lord God. Lord, I ask you to move it out the way right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Lord, I command, Lord God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, that this word will go forth and do what you please, Lord God. Lord God, and I pray right now, move me out the way, Lord God, and you take over, Lord God. I must decrease so that you might increase tonight, Lord, and you get the glory, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Turn with your Bibles to me with 1 Samuel 15, 1 through, we're going to read verses 1 through 24. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse, verses 1 through 24. Amen. When you get it, say amen. 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 The word of God reads like this. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. 
over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for them in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Touch your neighbor and say, destroy it all, kill it all. Amen. The Bible, the Bible reads on to say, spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey, and Saul gathered the people together, and the number, and the number of them in Taylor, 200,000 foot men, and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek, and lay wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go, the park, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For he showed kindness unto all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havia unto the coming to Shur. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of Amalekites, alive. The king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. He already messed up right there because God told him to utterly destroy everything. But he wanted to spare the king of the Amalekites, which was Agag. Amen. The verse 9 says, But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatness, and the lamb, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. Y'all yeah, remember when God told him to utterly destroy everything. But he would not refuse to utterly destroy everything, because he did what he thought was right in his eyes. Amen. Amen. But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed others. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on, gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the loin of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. So you want to blame it on the people, but it was his father. Amen. God told him, he got a commandment to Saul, he told him the other to destroy all. But he want to blame it on people. Let's go on and read. And it says, He spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have other than destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they become consumed. Wherefore then thou didst not obey the voice of the Lord, but thou didst fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. The reason he did evil because he spared them and God told him to utterly destroy. Amen. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Now he just told a lie right there. Amen. And but the people took the spoil of the sheep in the house, the chief of the things which shall have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he have also rejected thee from being king. Oh man, that messed up that. <laughs> and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. At first, y'all remember, he said he have done the commandment of the Lord. Now he repented, saying, I have sinned. Now he confessing up to his sin. But now it's too late, because the Lord already had rejected him. And for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, 
and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed.